Hi, this is Rachel Windenberg, the Helpful Art Teacher, and I'm creating this video at the request of numerous middle school art teachers who are basically at the end of the rope. A lot of new teachers tend to quit the profession. A lot of people find that the kids are very disrespectful, that they're not getting the administrative support that they would have expected or the parental support and that the job is exhausting and frustrating and is destroying their love for teaching. And in record numbers, middle school teachers are leaving the profession of education. So as an experienced veteran middle school art teacher, I have been asked to give my best advice. I truly do believe that if you stick it out in middle school education, you will develop superpowers. But the caveat is that they are developed and there aren't any shortcuts. Nobody starts out knowing what to do. Everyone has to go through the helpless drowning feeling. Everyone has to dread that class and feel that rising panic and nausea. Everyone has probably had to call out that mental health day because we just cannot stand one more minute of being disrespected, abused, and unsupported. What would really help is if veteran teachers fully admitted that they were once there and faced the same uncertainties that you face. The more honest we are about it, the more likely it will be that younger teachers will consider it worth it. Our teaching is my life's work, and I'm extremely proud of it. It makes me sad to see newer teachers getting so little support. So here's what I got. Here's my advice. In your worst class, it is usually the toxic combination of no more than four kids driving the discipline issues, and two of those kids are followers. So we're really only talking about two kids here causing a domino effect. Your first order of business is to find out who they are. They are not necessarily the kids you think they are. So here's the secret, how to figure it out. Create a worksheet with step-by-step -step directions. The worksheet should require a sketch prior to having access to other materials. It should have multiple steps, but not be too challenging. Just relying on the student being willing to read and follow a sequence of directions. Remember, this isn't a punishment. This is just, oh, we have to go through this to get to the really cool part of the project. Most students will do it. Hand it to the kids at the door as they enter the room. Don't attempt to quiet the class down and go over it. Just tell them to read and follow directions. The ones who do not turn in any work that day, call their parents. Just explain that they didn't turn in their sketch, it's the start of a major project, and you want to make sure that they get on track. If the parents don't speak English, get someone to translate. Let the rest of the class progress to part two of the project the next day. Still require the sketch from the kids who didn't do it the previous day. By the end of that class, you're going to be left with only two to four kids change their seats, maybe separate them, or maybe not. Do they talk while you are talking? Might need to move them to the back so the rest of the class can hear. Or you stand in the back and teach from the back so they aren't heard over you. Or sit them all at one table and introduce the lesson quietly, table by table, one at a time, to the kids who are listening. And make this group wait until last? Do they throw things at each other when separated? Might need to sit them all together. Do they play on their cell phones? put them in the front. In other words, do whatever it takes to put them wherever you need to so you can teach the rest of the class. Pinpoint specifically what is bothering you about their behavior and figure out how to address that. Meanwhile, request a meeting with the parents and notify guidance of the problem. Now you aren't saying the class is out of control. Translation, you have no classroom management skill. You are saying, I'm concerned about these few kids because they aren't turning in work and misbehaving. Completely different story. Let's help these kids. Win-win. Now that it's only a few troubled kids, find out their story. Ask their other teachers and guidance counselors. Work with them. You might not think you're reaching them, but sometimes, 20 years later, they send you a friend request on Facebook and tell you they want to be a teacher because of you. Yes, that happened to me most hostile, disruptive student I've ever had. He actually messaged me to tell me he was getting his GED and going to college. If you have a group of students who are destructive, don't clean up, or are not responsible with supplies, switch to paper and pencil and make the lessons more about ideas than about materials. But make them interesting ideas. You still want them to like art. If they're wasteful, require a sketch before breaking out the good materials. If they talk while you are talking, print the lessons step-by-step step on a worksheet. 
They're old enough to read it, so make them. Better yet, have them read it, discuss it in small groups, and explain it to you. Alternatively, try recording the demo on a silent video and playing it in a loop on your projector. This is also great for limited ang uh, English proficient students. Ask your students to write occasionally, but not as a punishment. Use their writing to get to know them. Ask them to read occasionally, but make the reading choices interesting. Have them respond to what they have read through art. The things you are constantly reminding kids about, your hills to die on, these are your classroom rules. They're different for every teacher. Anywhere from three to seven procedures, you need every kid to follow. Post them somewhere in the room at the beginning of the school year. In order to make the cut, a rule has to always be in effect. I've never felt the need to post consequences if a rule isn't followed. That implies I expect you to break them. And I don't think punishment really works anyway. If you break a rule, I'll remove remind you what the rule is and tell you to please follow it. The objective of discipline is to teach self-discipline. Here were my middle school rules, by the way. They worked superbly. When the art teacher is giving directions, keep your hand down and listen quietly. Save questions for when students are working independently. That was rule number one. Number two, follow directions. Number three, Use tools and equipment properly, clean up after yourself, and put things away where they belong. Number four, keep hands, feet, and all objects to yourself. Do not throw anything in this room, ever. Number five, constructive criticism only, no put-downs. Six, return to your seat as soon as you are done cleaning up and stay there until you are dismissed. Number seven, stay away from the door unless you have permission to leave. Okay, let's get back to that one class where you gave them the written directions. The next day, set up a separate table for the kids who haven't turned in yesterday's Q&A. They still owe you the work. Give a fun assignment to everyone else. Two of those kids will do it right away. They'll do their questions and answers. You switch them immediately to a good table. One kid will do it eventually. Praise him and switch his table, even if there's only five minutes left in the class. The last kid is your holdout, contact guidance, and the administrators. You may never reach that child because you don't have the proper support from the home. Sit down and have a talk with him and administration or a counselor. Let him know you're on his side. Keep working with him. Let him know that the only way he'll be allowed to sit with his friends is by turning in his work. Email the work to parents for him to complete at home. If he earns an F, give him that F, but keep a paper trail. You may reach some sort of awful detente with him, where he talks to his friends and does very little work. You may have his mom accusing you of picking on her baby, but the reality is now you have one challenging kid to help. Before you had a class you couldn't work with. In all the years I have been teaching, this method has never failed me. It exposes time and time again who is driving the disruptive behavior in the classroom. The domino effect only works if you let it. If that first domino isn't near enough to the second one, it falls by itself. It's your job to fix the classroom dynamic with the clear understanding that you can't fix the troubled child or children who are instigating the problems. Over the years, I've had various classes that have seemed horrid at first and found through this method that it was a domino effect caused by one kid or a few kids. Let's talk about that one kid. That child is always unique. Here is a short, off the top of my head list. A boy living in a homeless shelter. A girl diagnosed with bipolar who was recently released from a residential facility. A boy whose dad is in jail. A child with an undiagnosed, unmedicated disorder. A child of addicts. A child with domestic violence in the home. A child who's been abandoned on a doorstep to be raised by relatives a child being molested by his mom's boyfriend. All of these kids have stories, things you cannot fix for them. What you will not find, a child who is just spoiled, just a jerk, just hateful. You may never know the story, but there is always a story. However, keep in mind that a story is not an excuse. Letting disruptive behavior slide is doing a child no favors. Teachers have the right to teach and students have the right to learn. 
all you can do for them is, one, not allow them to take over your class, two, act fair but firm, three, document, 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 four, be patient but don't back down, five, involve other adults who can help, six, take nothing personally, seven, Make it clear to all involved that you care and that whatever you are doing comes from a place of caring and that as a teacher, you need to also concern yourself with the class as a whole. I have lots more advice for new middle school teachers, but unfortunately, the video is getting way too long. So I'm going to leave this right here, and I absolutely 100% promise that there will be a part two of this video and that I have a lot more advice that'll help you survive your first year teaching middle school.